Okay, sorry. Right. I've done this video once and then unfortunately somebody rang me just towards the end of it, so I'm going to have to redo it. Uh, so this is the second of the health risk videos and today we're going to look at liver and kidneys. Now, in general, most people are well aware that oral stress the liver. Uh, and to be honest, it is probably the main area of concern is 17 alkylated drugs. They stress the liver because they have to withstand breakdown by the liver in order to get within into our bloodstreams. Now, the main liver issues arising are increase in hepatite, hepa, hepatic, thank you, lysomal hydrolase. There you go, very big words. Basically, this is the liver's ability to remove toxins, cellular waste. Um, so one effect is that the liver's efficiency of removing cellular waste can be compromised. Uh, a reduction in drug metabolism of enzyme, which basically is what it says it is, it means that the metabolism of drugs will not be as efficient, and a decrease in the mitochondrial respiratory chain, which is the formation of ATP, cellular energy. Now. The big issue with these three is that they aren't always accompanied with a raise in liver values. Now, normally we regard liver health by whether AST or ALT is raised. These can occur without that happening. So, is it a big issue? Well, the liver is probably the most robust organ in the body. It is regenerative. Um, in fact, it will grow back from a third. Uh, and can withstand quite a lot of abuse. So, generally speaking, and it is always dose and duration dependent, so you've got to remember that. But generally speaking, liver stressors will right themselves with some downtime, either low TRT or time off. Obviously, as I'm, most people are well aware, I'm a big fan of time off. Um, gives the chance the liver turns to recover. Now, another area is hepatic peliosis. Now this is the formation of cavities within the liver and these cavities then fill with blood. Over time they can turn cystic and over time they can even turn tumours. They are benign. They're not cancerous or they, they shouldn't be in nature. Um, in fact the cases of liver cancer that is connected with steroid use and that isn't that it's the cause is in single digits annually worldwide. And in most of those cases, there are other factors in concern. So liver cancer isn't really of an issue. Now, these cavities aren't generally diagnosed or discovered till post-mortem, and they don't have any real implication on our health, not in a major way. They will compromise liver function slightly, um, and obviously this can be an issue, but generally our liver has enough redundancy built into it to more than cope with our daily needs. However, these may become complications if other illnesses are contracted. Now, I'm going to get this wrong. Cholestasis, I think is how you pronounce it. This is where the bile flow from the liver to the do dodenum, which is part of the small intestine, is blocked. This can happen to, this is due to an increase in bile salts, um, and this can have an effect on the kidneys. There is a little bit of an interrelationship between kidney, liver and kidneys. Also, high blood values, high RBC, high blood pressure will also impact on the kidneys as a secondary route from steroid use as will dehydration from the use of diuretics. Um, now, kidney issues can also increase due to an increase in bile salts, and uh, this can lead to uh, proteinuria, which is protein in the urine, which is part of nephrotic syndrome. Now, nephrotic syndrome isn't actually a kidney disease. Nephrotic syndrome is protein in the urine, low albumin in the blood, and water retention, edema. Now, the water retention is caused by the fact that albium holds protein in the blood. Protein in the blood, therefore, uh, then as a result of holding water in the blood. 
which is then transferred into the muscle. When albumin is low and protein is leaking out of the blood through the kidneys, the result is water can't be suspended in the blood, so water then goes under the skin, causing edema, water retention. It also causes muscular dehydration. There is a reason, if you watch my going old video that I did last week, the one of the causes behind my high number of muscle tears is muscular dehydration due to my kidney problem, which has been ongoing within me for several years and just not being diagnosed. Now, most with nephrotic syndrome, when they undergo kidney biopsy, will be diagnosed with SSGS. This is where the glomeri within the kidneys, which are little filters, little finger filters, are partially damaged. This is what causes leak. Now, it's been long said that steroids don't have any direct impact in the kidneys and it's secondary nature via blood pressure or via dehydration, etc. that causes the issues. However, there is some evidence to support that there is a direct impact. There are several case studies um, involving bodybuilders showing FSGS through ASS use. And I know personally of half a dozen bodybuilders and powerlifters that are suffering with kidney problems. So I'm sorry, but common sense prevails and I can't not believe that there is a direct action. Also, there are a lot of animal studies now start to emerge. Um, there are some case studies as well on humans. Now, what you've got to know about research is that uh, a lot of these studies, when they're published, they are literally that. They're a study in their findings. They're not conclusive. They're not generally of a large enough catchment area to be proven as fact. And it takes time and numerous studies before it is adopted as being as so. So the stuff that we're seeing at the moment is early stage stuff and we'll need some time to be uh, collaborated and shown to be working in other areas. Um, but there are case studies where acute kidney injury has been caused by train use. Now, this is not kidney disease. This is direct impact damage to the kidney, but not on a condition that's ongoing. So therefore, it should not worsen. Uh, and there are animal studies showing that TREN has a direct impact on kidney function. Now, there is a lot to be said that animal studies don't translate to humans. That is true. There's many examples of this. But I do think it's worth noting when you look at the anecdotal evidence of bodybuilders suffering with kidney problems. And there is some animal studies showing that testosterone increases TNFA, which accelerates kidney issues. Uh, again, I'm not sure how much that will translate to a human being. I know a few people with kidney problems that remain on TRT or remain on, not massive, but do use some pharmaceutical doses of testosterone uh, and have had no further impact on the kidneys. So I'm not sure how much that translates. But my personal opinion is that yes, steroids do have an impact on the kidneys. But like everything else, it is dose and duration dependent. So to sum all this up, what's your values? Use a protectorin like UDCA or TUDCA to try and keep liver stress a minimum. Orals have the greatest impact, so manage them effectively. Downtime, time off is essential and will help the liver repair. It will regenerate. Certain conditions you may carry for the rest of your days and never even know and may have no impact on your health whatsoever. So don't be panicking massively. Um, but obviously, lifestyle has an impact. If you're using gear and you're drinking, you're taking far over for prescription drugs, up as down as sleep as whatever, your liver is going to get hammered. So just bear that in mind. Test regularly and monitor the results. Be wary of your kidneys. Look after them. There is growing evidence that there is direct contribution to kidney damage from steroid use. Bear in mind that high body mass, poor hydration, all affect kidneys as well. So it's probably more of a lifestyle issue. But then again, I don't think it's something we should ignore. And I definitely don't agree with people fobbing it off and saying, oh, no, there's no renal effect. There is. I'm certain of that. And the evidence is grow slowly but surely mounting to support this. So there you go. That's liver and kidneys. Um, 
it boils down to, to, to simple as this. You need to manage your drug usage. Blood testing is important, so you keep an eye of what's going on. Good hydration, good electrolyte management, good salt, magnesium, potassium management will all help with kidney health. N-acetyl acid is uh, claimed to support kidney. I've not seen studies on it, but it is generally accepted as being quite a protection for the kidneys as well. And there you go. You know, the rest of it is look at the drawer, I'm afraid. But um, the risks are there. So be aware of them, watch them, test regularly, and then you can get a good idea if anything is going beat on, and you can sort it out before it ends up being a disaster. Excuse me. Right. So that's it for the health one this time. Um, next time, we're going to look at tendon integrity, muscle damage, and steroids effect on those regions. Okay. And then finally, we will probably do a little bit more on the brain. I know it's a pet, pet project of mine, is the brain. And then we'll get into some more stuff later on. Um, and then that will be it for the health. So. Take care and I'll speak to you soon.